Welcome to this special episode of Tea Time with Taryn. Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn your old powder eyeshadow into paint. And I've done that on this uh, journal page in the background here. So to get started, I'm going to be um, stamping out some drawer stamps from this set. And I have the corresponding uh, thinlets to cut them out. So I'm going to start with that and then I am going to do my background just so that I know how far down I should paint my background. I'm sorry if I sound a little nasally today, my allergies are starting to act up. So I've just arranged the jars where I think I want them so I have a good idea of where I'd like to place it. So now I've grabbed my powder eyeshadow and um, I never wear this color but it's such a beautiful color so I'm glad that I found a use for it. So there are a lot of ways you can do this but the way I'm going to do is I'm using just plain old white school glue just because I feel like it gives me the right consistency. And um, stay, hold on a little bit till after I finish painting, and I'll show you some different examples of different mediums. So, just dumping a bunch in there. If you find that you don't have enough, or if too much, you can adjust by adding more glue or more eyeshadow accordingly. So, I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm just going to start mixing it. You could do this in a container or on a paint palette, but. Um, I like to do it on my acrylic blocks because it makes for really easy cleanup and I don't uh, tend to make enough that I that I would have enough to save it for next time. I usually just end up using everything I make. So here I've just uh, just you know really mix it in so that you got rid of the lumps and it's nice and smooth and it's the right consistency and it's not too pasty. If it's a little too pasty, pasty then um, add more glue. You want it to be a nice smooth um, paint texture. I'm going to use a hot air tool to force my um, background dry because I found it bubbles a little bit and I like that blistering look. It didn't work as well on my background page as it did in my initial test but I still like the that it blistered a little bit. So this is using a different type of glue. This is tacky glue and it made for more pastier look and I used it um, with a stencil even. This one is um, clear gesso and it gave me more of a matte finish and I kind of like that too, maybe for a different project. You could also mix it with clear paint. You have lots of different options. So I'm just, I've just got some wood um, pattern paper and I'm just going to make that my table base. Since I had the white glue out, I just ended up using that to glue down my my um, tabletop background. I have all these buttons. I love buttons. I love what they look like, and so I'm gonna put some buttons in one of my jars. I decided to go with all um, muted colors. I'm going to run some of them through my Xyron Create a Sticker machine. Now, not all of them fit through there. Um, some of them were um, a bit too big, so um, I ended up just putting really um, hefty double-sided tape on the back of these. For some reason, I don't have any luck gluing down buttons. They seem to peel off on me, so I use double-sided tape. I'm going to use uh, my Perfect Medium from Ranger, which is basically like a Versamark uh, marker. So I can just pretty much paint in where I'd want my Versamark to be. Now I went a little bit over the lines, um, so I just scraped that off with um, a little, it's a, it's a cooling tool, but I use it for, uh, 
for clearing off excess. The powder I initially used is Heat and Stick, so now it allows me to add some sparkles or um, in one of my videos I showed you how to do it with eyeshadow. But it's, uh, it's very handy because you can, you can add just about any medium, any dry medium, using this Heat and Stick um, embossing powder. And then once you've applied the, uh, your medium, you have to reheat it again just to ensure that it is set and sticks. My viewers are always telling me I need to use my tweezers, so I did find them and I have been using them for my videos, so I'm not burning my fingers anymore. Thank you to my viewers. <laughs> Still, it felt, the jar felt like it was missing something. It seemed a little too plain. So I grabbed some um, little star sequins and a little bit of glue and just started dumping them on there. I wanted it to look clumpy and um, really inconsistent because it's just a bunch of sparkles in the jar. And of course, it's, uh, it's just regular school glue so it dries clear. I didn't have a paintbrush stamp and so I, I'm not the world's best artist but I thought I probably handle this one there's it's not there's not that much to it so I drew out my paintbrush since it's my art journal I really wanted to add things that I really represent me and who I am and I, I'm really into painting. I love buttons and of course who doesn't love sparkles right so um, and I love to use those in my in my journaling so I definitely thought those three elements were appropriate. I'm just using um, some permanent markers by a different companies Sharpie, Prisma, whatever I can find just to color in and uh, you know, I wanted a variety of different browns so I could get that wood grain look. This is just an old gold gel pen that I had lying around. I used to have a gold sharpie, I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just coloring this in with my gel pen. It's, honestly, it's not doing a great job, but it's doing the job. So. Until I find my gold um, sharpie, this this will just have to do. I'm just going over some of the details got covered up by a pen. So I really wanted this color, I don't have it in a marker, so um, it's called Tranquil Tide, it's a stamping up, and I just wanted to, to make it look like I still had paint on this paintbrush. So I'm just taking the paintbrush, dunking it straight in the ink to give it that kind of uh, the used brush look. I didn't want a nice clean edge to that, I wanted it to look kind of messy, so that's what I did. Now I'm just using some markers in a variety of gray shades just to give my paintbrush some moving fresh tips some color. I, I decided to go over the handle again. wasn't quite happy with the color, so. There we go, my paintbrush is finished. Now I'm just gonna make sure I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to add some texture, so I've just got a couple of different very random texture um, stamp sets and I'm just going to add the, some of these into the background. So one is called Ghoulish Grunge by Stamping Up and that's the one that I'm using right now for this, um, for the bricks and for the splatters 
I used I'm using gorgeous grunge um, everything I use will be in uh, on my blog you can find the link to my blog in the description below so I'm just coloring in with some brown Prisma markers to give it some shading and texture and color and just to speed up the drying process I used a heat tool Put on some double-sided tape to the back of my jars and I'm now sticking those down. I also added double-sided tape to my um, paintbrush and trim that to size and tape that down. To make it look like my paintbrush is sitting in a jar of water, I'm going to use glossy accents. And I'm just gonna completely just cover that area where it needs to look like there is water sitting. So I'm just doing that. see that the glossy look that's exactly how it'll dry it'll look wet which is really awesome now I'm just gonna go in and um, draw over the paintbrush where the paintbrush is covering the lines for the jar because I want it to look like the paintbrush is in the jar so I'm restoring those um, those lines with a, a black pen. Now I'm just going to add some of my Big Chat stickers by Tim Holtz. I love that book because it just has a bunch of random words in there and I can just pick some and add them to my um, layouts. So I picked Create, Explore, Discover. One of my most favorite tools um, to use is my white gel pen. I just love adding little um, highlight accents everywhere. I think it just really makes the design pop. And now I'm just using a plain black gel pen and I'm just going to make a, a bit of a border just because I feel like borders really help make the piece look finished. I don't know, it just feels like there's always something missing when I don't add a border. So it just looked like there was something missing still, so I added more, more paint splatter um, stamp in that corner. And of course, because there's pages underneath, it didn't give me a great impression. I should have put a block underneath the page. So I'm just coloring in with my Sharpie all that white area that kind of got missed. And I just really love shading things, so I'm adding more um, shading to the jars, give it a little bit more dimension. I'm just using some Prisma markers in the French grey tones.
have it. There is my finished art journal layout. I hope you enjoyed it and got inspired and I hope that you found my tips for using eyeshadow as a paint um, helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to leave me any questions or comments below. If you like this video, you'll probably like these videos that are going to pop up on the screen. Check them out and have fun and until next time, happy crafting!